These are five gallon plastic diesel cans and I am so tired of the lids breaking. Instead of buying new cans at $30 to $40 each or ordering new lids online for somewhere between like three and $5 each, I wanted to 3D print my own replacements, but not just in one material. Today, we're taking it further with a dual material print, PTG for the rigid body of the cap and flexible TPU for the gasket, all in one go. And they turned out so good I made six of them. Let's walk through how I did it, what worked, and how you can do the same. Welcome to the studio. Apologize for the mess. If you happen to be a farmer or rancher, this is one of those everyday problems a lot of us run into. These yellow Midwest diesel cans are everywhere. We use them all over the ranch, sometimes daily, to keep equipment, trucks, and tractors running. And the lids, they just don't hold up. They crack, they strip, and they leak fuel all over everything. So this is the perfect project to show how 3D printing can step in and solve a real problem. And today, we're not just making a replacement, we're making a better one using PTG and TPU together on the Bamboo Lab H2D. Quick disclaimer, I am talking about 3D printing a cap for the diesel can, not fuel spouts or vent hardware. Diesel is far less aggressive than gasoline, but still, be careful when you're handling any type of fuel. And honestly, it kind of annoys me that I even have to say that. I started this whole process by putting out a call on X, asking if anyone had or knew where to get the STL files for these diesel can lids. I had done some looking around before, even months ago, but I couldn't find the one that really fit. It was always the wrong size or the wrong threads. But thanks to the community, I got a bunch of replies and links, and one of those models matched perfectly for these Midwest Can Company diesel cans. Now, I could have just done some quick measurements and tossed this into Fusion 360, drew something up, added some threads, but I love to use existing models when they're available. To find which of these models was a good fit, I measured the inside threads of a broken cap with calipers. It was about 45 millimeters or so, and that lined up with one of the STLs that I was provided. Now, my first test print was in PLA just to check the fit, and it worked, which was great, but it was just a bit too tight. And that showed me that the design was good, but that I needed to scale X and Y up about 1%, but leaving Z at the same you know, scale about 100%. And that adjustment gave me just a smooth, usable fit. For the actual usable prints, I chose PTG for the cap body because of its compatibility with diesel fuel. That's the big reason. Now it can handle direct contact without breaking down, and it's also UV resistant and it doesn't get brittle like PLA. On top of that, it tolerates temperature swings and can take the bumps and bruises and the knocks from riding around in the back of a truck. But here's where it gets interesting. We use TPU in the second nozzle on that H2D to 3D print the gasket directly into the cap. Now that's one of the superpowers really of the Bamboo Lab H2D. It's a dual nozzle printer, so the left nozzle ran my PTG and the right nozzle ran my TPU. And it was as easy as painting which parts I wanted to be PTG and TPU in the slicer and then sending it off to be printed. Here's a quick look at how I did that in the slicer. You simply just select the areas that you want flexible TPU, paint them, assign the right nozzle, and the printer does the rest. It's amazing at how easy it is to combine rigid and flexible materials in one print now. Why TPU? TPU has flexibility and compression, making it ideal for the gasket surface that seals against the can. Formulations can vary, so I'll keep an eye on mine over time and update the pinned comment if I see any swelling or softening of the material. But for limited diesel contact, TPU is holding up really well so far. Bamboo Lab even makes TPU designed for AMS use. And this can be done not only on the H2D dual nozzle, but also on the P1S, the X1 Carbon, and even on the A1 Mini, uh, even with filament swaps. You don't even need an enclosed printer to pull this off. For my print settings, I used two walls, about 15% infill, six top layers and four bottom layers at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Now that gave me a perfectly usable cap. If you wanted more strength, like you're, you're afraid tightening it down would tear those threads up, bump the walls up to four or five, and uh, you'd have some pretty strong caps. Each lid took really only about an hour to an hour and a half to print, depending on the layer height. Once I had one that worked, that's the magic of 3D printing. You can just run more. With the PTG body and the TPU gasket combo, every print came off the bed ready to go. There was no extra assembly 
required. Now, honestly, this really actually feels like a small business idea waiting to happen. Imagine bins of these type of caps sitting down at your local auto parts or farm and ranch stores. They'd fly off the shelves. I know because I have bought them. So think about that. There's like something like 50,000 auto parts stores just across the United States. Someone go do it. Seriously, go make a million dollars. And here's the best part. Each one of these caps costs less than a quarter to make. It was about 22 cents in filament. Now compare that to that three to five dollars for replacements online or in the store. You can literally print a dozen of these for the price of one retail cap. There were a couple of test prints in PLA with a size change. By the time I had the PETG body with the TPU gasket printed, scaled with that 1% on the X and the Y, the fit was absolutely perfect. It threaded on smoothly, sealed tight, and honestly, it worked better than the original spout and cap. There was no flipping the spout inside out, there's no leaks, no spills, no headaches, it just twists on and it seals and it works. That little feeling, in fact, as it grips the TPU right at the end of that twist is just perfect, I love it. The dual nozzles on the H2D really allowed us to print the gasket right into the cap using TPU. But if you don't have dual material capability, you could easily do this with filament changes on your printer. Or you could print a TPU gasket completely separate and just push it down on the inside. TPU is fuel resistant enough for this limited contact and being able to combine it with PTG in one print really makes this a next level solution. It's pretty awesome that we get to do this right here at home or in our offices or in our shops. Okay, so here is the real world test. I filled the cans, tossed them in the back of the truck, kicked them around a little bit to check for leaks, nothing. The TPU gasket compressed perfectly between the PETG body of the cap and the container and the knurling made it easy to twist on and off. I am so happy with how this turned out. And here's something, add a little text in the slicer and you can label or brand them so you know which ones are regular and which ones are off-road diesel or simply color coding them with different colors of PETG and TPU to make them stand out. Here is a quick rundown on other materials that people might ask about. PLA, not good. Fuel breaks it down fast. ABS, works okay with limited contact. ASA, excellent choice, wide ranging chemical and UV resistance. Nylon, very strong, but sensitive to moisture. For me, PTG plus TPU was the perfect combo. Now, here are some tips if you are printing these yourself. If your lid is a little bit too loose, scale it down to 99%. If it's too tight, kind of like mine was, scale it up to about 101%. It, it's not gonna take a lot. And like I said earlier, I only scaled mine on the X and Y and I left Z alone. Now for the gasket, just make sure that your TPU is dry and you won't have any issues at all. Future Loyal here, as you can see from the B-roll, if you over tighten them, they begin to crack and that was easily solved by increasing the bottom layers to 10, which is actually the top layer on the cap. And I also increased the walls to three and that made a huge difference. So that would be the settings that I recommend. If this project gave you an idea, hit that like so more people find it, subscribe for more practical 3D prints kind of like this one, and let me know in the comments what everyday fix that you'd like me to try next I try to read every comment and some of our best projects come directly from your suggestions. And a huge thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and YouTube thinks you're going to like this video right here. So you should go watch it. Now I got to go clean up. It's messy.